<laughs> Hello, we are back with another review. It's Jason and Max. We're here with the Mission Impossible Fallout review. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's great. Uh, yeah, Mission Impossible. Uh, what is this one? Fallout. Fallout the 6. Fallout, yes. And they call it Fallout because Tom Cruise explodes in this one. <laughs> and they got to pick up all the little Tom Cruise pieces all over the city. Tom and that's the end of the movie. Have, have a good one. <laughs> um, Tom Cruise has done with the Mission Impossible franchise kind of what uh, Vin Diesel did with Fast and Furious. Not that it's the same thing, but... Um, it's about family. I just mean the fact that he's found a franchise and he's embraced it and he's going to, you know, keeps coming back and for oh, the most part dude, turning out a quality product. No, I, I don't think that's how it works. I think Tom Cruise is like, I'm going to do 94 halo jumps and then ride a motorcycle recklessly through the city and the, the people at Paramount or whatever are like, uh, before he kills himself doing this, we need to film all of it. And then we'll just make a movie around it. Like, I don't even think Tom Cruise sees the other actors or anything. <laughs> <laughs> 94 Halo jumps he did for this movie. That's insane. Uh, yeah, I won't, I won't jump out of a good plane one time. Not if that plane is still working, you can't get me out of it. But uh, this dude, 94 times from like 25,000 feet. Anyway, uh, the movie is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's probably uh, what I consider, I think, the best Mission Impossible movie since the first one. I like the first one the best. Um, but this one is a little more down to earth. There's not as much like super science. And uh, there's, there's more espionage. There's more like the Mission Impossible things. And, and then like... The ripping the mask off. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, they're, they're being spies and they're doing spy things. So I'm, I'm down for that. And uh, it, uh, this is... I think this is, like, the first Mission Impossible movie where he doesn't, like, really go rogue. I mean, he goes a little rogue, but it's not, it's not, like, full on, you know, like, every other Mission Impossible, that dude goes, like... It starts off rogue. Yeah, he's like, oh, no, like, we gotta disavow Ethan Hunt, uh, and he's like, I'm not, I didn't do anything wrong, I gotta go rogue to prove my innocence, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a solid flick, though, I really, really dug this movie. I was surprised at how long it was. Yeah. But only because it didn't feel like like two, two hours, hours yeah, at the end of it. And they did like the pacing in this movie is awesome. Like they, they they split up your action sequences just you know, just enough. There's like a thirty five minute chase scene where like half the time you don't realize you're still in the chase scene. <laughs> they use like four different kinds of vehicles. <laughs> Simon Pegg is awesome in this movie too. So is uh um um The Chick? No, the other dude. What I can't dude? think of his name. Ving Rhames? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> wow. I mean, I feel like they're just like... The only reason Ving Rhames is there is because he's been there. Um, but, like, in the first couple, he could have, like, been, like, action guy. But now he's he's just, like, an older gentleman. You can see he's, like, he's a little fatter in this one. <laughs> and uh, um, I don't know, like, you know, like, they kind of just... They kind of have to make... Simon Pegg do thing action things because like Ving Rhames just can't and they they're both kind of the same guy though, you know like they're just, they're both tech guy mm -hmm. so it's just a little weird but uh, I don't I don't know I I thought they were gonna kill him off in this one but they didn't so I right, spoilers I'm sorry should we, should we edit that out so you is, edit that out. is it in <laughs> um, Bad Robots contracts that Simon Pegg has to appear in the film. Bad Robot J.J. Abrams. Yeah. Because he could was be. in episode seven. He was well, I mean, but who Mission doesn't want to be in a Star Wars movie? Since J.J. He was in the J.J. Star Trek movies. Well, who doesn't <laughs> want to be in a Star Trek movie? I'm just but, saying. No, but he was playing Scotty. I mean, he had, he had a good one. But I mean, like, you know, directors will pick, take people. Like, I mean, Tarantino will use as, as many of the same people as he can all the time. Um, so that, that's probably, a, a, you know, something you just got going on with J.J. But yeah, man. I mean, you didn't even know it was him in the Star Wars movie. So that doesn't really <laughs> even count. Um... But, uh, yeah, I would have Simon Pegg in every. Everything. I'm not complaining yeah. about it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Mission Possible, uh, Fallout, without spoiling anything else other than Ving Rhames' safety, is, uh, yeah, it's just a solid flick. I think it's, it's uh, they've been on an upward trend. Um, you know, two was the, the lowest of the low, and then, you know, three was eh, and then, like, you know, four and five, they're, they're getting better. And this one, it was, like, I think the perfect blend of the new action style movie that they're trying to make and the espionage movie. And that's, I mean, that's just probably why it was so long. 
but uh, it's almost like I heard this somewhere else. But it's almost like with each Mission Impossible, they learned from the previous, and then they finally got the formula right, right around Rogue Nation, and then carried over into Fallout. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a reverse Fox or Sony <laughs> superhero movie. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just well put together. There's there's not I mean, like they they bring Ethan Hunt the character along more. Like you get more development as that. You, you see they kind of tie up some loose ends from the other movies. Um, yeah, so this is a lot of good things. Um, if you, I, I think you should watch Rogue Nation Probably. if you want to watch this one because this is the first time that's like more like a direct sequel to the last movie. It's not just like oh, it's another mission. It's like this mission has a lot to do with the last mission. So uh, yeah, you might want to watch Rogue Nation before you check this out. But uh, if you haven't seen it already, but uh, it's just a, it's just a good balls to the wall. Tom Cruise. Look look at what Tom Cruise did movie. <laughs> um, Henry Cavill is also awesome. At yes, movie. the mustache rules. I'd like to see the director of this tackle a Superman movie with Henry Cavill because uh, he directed him very well. Like, you don't realize in the Superman movies how muscular Henry Cavill is, but in this thing, he's, like, huge. Well, no, what I did like about this one is this is a, one of the first movies where they play on how small Tom Cruise is. Yeah, and every time you were standing next to Cavill. Oh, he just looks like a, like a, there's there's no amount of film trickery they could have done to make them look equal. So they just kind of threw it out the window, and 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 that's that's good because I mean you need to show. I mean, like, I'm sorry, Tom, you're not six foot. Like that's just <laughs> you're, you're a lot in life, but you are Tom Cruise. So you know, just just be that. Um, but yeah, like so, like that fight scene in the bathroom, crazy awesome fight scene. But you got to see. I mean, just like. Tom Cruise, like, they're, they're fighting a kung fu guy. He's doing all his kung fu. Tom Cruise is kind of finessing his way, you know, using his special special team's tactics or whatever. And Henry Cavill just comes in there like a wrecking ball. <laughs> He's just like, I'm huge, and I'm going to... <laughs> I'm just going to punch my way through my problems, and we'll call it a day. Um, so, no, I dug that for sure. And Henry Cavill did a, a good job. I mean, you kind of saw, like, the, the twists yeah. aren't, aren't exactly... Yeah, you know, this isn't the sixth sense here, you know, but uh, it, it uh, you know, it was still well done. But you could definitely see what was going on. I mean, I guess they kind of just telegraphed it the whole time. There, there wasn't really a minute where you're you're like, oh, well, he could possibly be. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, it's 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 a solid flick. Like I had a lot more fun than I thought I would. I uh, I tried not to listen to too much of the hype going into it. Um, and like my friend uh, who uh, I went for my birthday, my friend took me, and. Uh, you know, he was like, oh, man, like, I was like, he was like, the Rotten Tomatoes number, I was like, don't even tell me. Like, I'm not looking at it. I don't want you to tell me because if I hear a number, then it's already going to start a bias. And and, and I, I don't even care. Like, I don't want it to because I don't care about Mission Impossible. So as, as fresh as I can go in, that's what it needs to do. But uh, yeah, let me ruin it for you. Uh, the movie's good and you need to watch it. <laughs> Movie gets three out of three geeks for me. And the thing that pushed it to three over two is, one, you need to see this movie in the theater. Mm. And two, it is the best movie mustache since Murder on the Orient Express. Ah, uh, I mean, it's not even close to... I said since. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's not even the same ballpark. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, but like, but see, the thing is, though, like, the, the difference is, the, where Murder on the Orient Express mustache had presence... This mustache has, like, history. <laughs> so you know the story behind the mustache, and that makes it more. Because, it's, I mean, it's, it's a mustache, and he's not even rocking just the mustache. So he still has, like, the, the stubble. So the, it's not even really full mustache. It's more like light goatee than it is full mustache. So they, they still even pull back from it. But, uh, yeah, no, the, 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 you know, the mustache that killed Superman is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is real. And, and I love it. It's, it's, it's a good stash for sure. But yeah, three out of three geeks for me too. Like I've been telling, I've been telling everybody, like go see it, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, you definitely need to watch this. It's a spectacle, so you want to watch it as big as you can. Um, you know, go go find your nearest IMAX theater and watch Tom Cruise do crazy things. Have a great day. Recycle your droids.